Hello everyone, Karnasa here, and as you do yesterday, I was scrolling through Twitter when I stumbled across this incredibly cursed image. So what am I going to do today? Of course, I'm going to try and recreate this in Kerbal Space Program and try and get this most cursed of rockets up to orbit. So what this is, we've got a Starship nose cone essentially, or a Starship second stage, which I have used my SN9 recreation for. That was, <laughs> that was a cursed video in itself. And then underneath that, we have the powerhouse of the Saturn V. Of course, it is the Saturn 1 C stage powered by five F1A engines in this case. And if that wasn't going to be enough, if that wasn't going to provide enough thrust to get this monstrosity to orbit, well, we've got a couple of Falcon 9 boosters on the side. So essentially, this is a Saturn V with a Falcon heavy configuration. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really cursed, it's really cursed. So when I saw this, I did want to have a use for every single stage that we are going to have on this rocket. So the Starship tank at the top isn't going to be filled up with Methalox as it should be. No, I'm gonna fill that up with Hydrolox because the payload for this mission which is going to be the space shuttle. Yeah, <laughs> like I said, very cursed. Well, we will be able to use the RS-25s on those on the space shuttle orbiter. That way we can use absolutely everything that this rocket does provide. And it took me kind of a really long time to figure out exactly how I'm going to place everything on here. So what I'm about to do now is I am trying to get the space shuttle on the side. And you can see I have used a radial decoupler on that starship. That way I can enable crossfeed and we can pump the Hydrolox from that Starship tank into the Space Shuttle, and then we can use the RS-25s on that Space Shuttle. However, whilst I was building this, I was really struggling, so I thought, screw this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new craft, create the Space Shuttle, then I'll save that as a sub-assembly and move that into the main craft that I have been working on. And if people do want to recreate this themselves, I will include a mod list in the description of this video with every single mod that I have on this save. Be aware, this is being done in Realism Overhaul though, so you will need RO in all Order for this to be compatible. I will also include links to some of the more harder to find mods that I use for this, especially the Space Shuttle. The Space Shuttle itself was quite difficult to locate and to get a working version that did work with Realism Overhaul. But there you go, we can see we are now mounting the Space Shuttle onto the side of the Monstrosity. I should just call this the Monstrosity rather than the Cursed Rocket. And all that's left to do, I did notice there were a few AJ-60As from the Atlas V on the side of the SpaceX boosters, so I'm going to grab some of those now and whack those on two. So we've got a mix of the Atlas V, Falcon Heavy, Saturn V, Starship, and STS all in a single rocket. Really, the only thing that we are missing is the SLS. Although you could say that the RS-25s obviously are going to be used on the SLS, but maybe, maybe I could come up with my own design later on that also incorporates the SLS into this design. Finally, we are going to have to sort out our staging, which is very messy because all of those Merlin 1Ds are individual engines. So this took quite a long time to get all of this together. But with that done, now all that remains is to get this hunk of junk up into low Earth orbit and, well, <laughs> see if this thing is flight worthy. But here we are at Cape Canaveral and there go the five F1A engines, the four AJ-60As, the 18 Merlin 1Ds and the three RS-25s to power this on its way up to orbit. Yes, this is ridiculously overpowered. Although that being said, the thrust to weight ratio on the pad was only about 1.3. This is very, very heavy, of course, and we are basically burning all of our fuel in this rocket from the first stage. That's why we need all of these engines to actually get us off the ground. So if people want to fly this recreation, or not even a recreation, if people want to fly this design, I will also include a craft file in the description of this video so you can try this for yourself. I wasn't able to use Mech Jebiscent Guidance for this launch because it broke every time that I tried doing that, so what I've had to do instead is use Smart ASS to control my heading, my pitch, and my roll. I prefer this over normal SAS because you get to more fine-tune how you are going to be able to control your rocket, and with engines sticking all over the place, like in this design, like the RS-25s, well, stock SAS just isn't able to cope with that. Now, the only real difference with this design from the design that I saw on Twitter is the Space Shuttle Orbiter. It 
is a little bit higher up than it was in the design. The reason why I've gone for that is because I did want to attach the shuttle to that Starship tank. Like I said earlier on in the video, I did want to have a use for all of the parts of this rocket. So when we stage and get rid of the Saturn 1C tank and the two Falcon boosters, I did need that shuttle orbiter to be attached to the Starship tank on the top. One other thing about this design is it's not going to be very crew friendly at all. We almost push up to 15 Gs on ascent. So poor Connie Ortiz and Ludmilla Dejnovia, who are the Kerbonauts that we do have along for the ride on this mission, well, they're going to be almost as flat as a pancake by the time that they finish getting their way up to orbit. But there we go. We can see the Saturn 1C has now run out of fuel and we are going to stage that away. This was the hardest thing about this design. So this is not the first time I attempted to launch this, as may be apparent by my Mech Jebison guidance comments earlier on. So <laughs> getting this so that the Saturn 1C didn't crash back into the shuttle orbiter was incredibly difficult and I had to attempt this launch several times in order to get the perfect flight profile in order for that not to happen. Also, because the RS-25s only have one ignition and they are only ground lit, we are going to have to pitch down very, very aggressively now in order to make sure that our orbit doesn't really fly away from us. So pointing almost directly at Earth, we are going to be burning those three RS-25s until we have achieved a stable orbit around Earth, which really won't take an awful long time. You can see we are traveling almost 7,300 meters per second now, and it's about seven. 1,400 meters per second to get a stable orbit around Earth. If you would like to see me refine this design by adding a SLS section, please leave a comment and if it gets enough interest, I will look into doing that. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, why not give it a like if you've really enjoyed it and want to keep up with the content on my channel, please do consider subscribing. I'd like to give a big thanks for the continued support from all of my patrons and I have been Karnasa and I will see you later.